everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Season 3 for Arrow. So Season 3 has been a pretty interesting season regarding opinions. There are people that downright hated the season, they thought the writing was shitty, they didn't like what that Laurel is a black canary. They did not agree with a lot of what the season was trying to do. There's people that have been like, man, and then there's those that enjoyed it, but probably not as much as the first two seasons. And then there's those that actually think this is better than the first two seasons. So I really like Arrow, and I'm actually wearing my Arrow shirt right now. Yeah. I love this shirt, but that's not the point. I do really like Arrow. Season one, I thought was an outstanding setup season. It may have been a pain in the ass for the first like five episodes, but then after that, that's when the season picked up. That's when I really got hooked on Arrow. And it was really great. Season two, I thought was better than season one. It got a little more deeper with the storyline. It really had my palms sweating. And of course, Deathstroke was just a fantastic villain for season two. Now, for season three, I will already go ahead and tell you guys, I don't think it's as good as season one and season two, but for me, season three, for its own right, it's still a cool season. I really enjoyed a lot of things about the season. And I really respect the writers going in a different direction because the direction this season took is so much different than the season one and season two. And I really respect that. So now let's go ahead and dive into my thoughts with Arrow season three. My worst episode of the season is actually the season three premiere. Now, I was not going to let one episode worry me. With that being said, I was very disappointed, extremely disappointed in how season three started. I just thought the season three premiere it had too many things going on for the sake of it. I thought it felt very forced. Oh yeah, and very quick, I do want to tell you guys that this is going to be full of spoilers because it's going to be hard to talk about this season. So yeah, you guys have been warned. Unless you don't care about spoilers, feel free to watch this review. And good thing I just said that because I was about to reveal a major spoiler. So season three actually starts off with Sarah dying because Sarah dies at the end of the season three premiere, which by the way, I thought was so incredibly forced and it just happened out of nowhere. I'm not kidding you, when the season three premiere ended, I was like, what the fuck? Just talking about rushing. The first half of the season, it's them trying to figure out who killed Sarah. And I like that the first half of the season actually focused on that. I thought it made for a lot of interesting stories. Laurel is going through grief. I know a lot of people don't like Laurel, but personally, I like Laurel and I felt for her. I felt a reason why she wanted to fight, why she wanted to be the Black Canary. I really got behind Laurel. So I like how in this season, Laurel wants to fight because of the death of her own sister, but she wants to do it because she wants to have a purpose. And the other thing is Thea. I know people don't really buy into Thea fighting, and trust me, at first it was weird. It did take me some time to get used to Thea being a badass. I really did like Thea here more than season two, because one of my issues with season two of Arrow was that Thea was so annoying. I mean, she drove me nuts in season two, but thank God, in season three, she really improved. By the end of the first half of season three, when we get to the mid-season, was that it's revealed Thea actually killed Sarah. But it's just because she was drugged by Malcolm Merlin to go shoot Sarah, in which, yeah, that's really fucked up. We get an introduction to Ra's al Ghul in the season. The actor's name is Matt Nabel, and my god, did this guy pull off Ra's al Ghul. He really looked the character. The character was just really interesting. And that fight that he and Oliver Queen had at the end of the climb, holy shit. Ra's al Ghul kills 
Oliver and pushes Oliver off the cliff. So for like a whole month while we're on our Christmas and New Year's break, we're wondering, man, where is season three gonna go? Like we knew Oliver was gonna still be alive. We all knew it, come on. We knew he wasn't gonna actually die. What would the show do without Oliver Queen? Well, the first half of season one, Except for the season three premiere, I thought all the episodes were actually really fantastic. They were really gripping. Like we see uh, John Diggle with his wife and his baby. We get to see um, Thea trying to get used to Malcolm Merlin because of the fact that she lost her mother in season two. She's trying to get used to the fact that she's now becoming Malcolm Merlin plus her brother because she can fight. Oh, also, Ray Palmer. The Adam, played by, yes, Brandon Routh. He was fantastic this season. And he provided so much charisma. He was actually the comic relief of the season because um, Felicity, I'm going to get to her later on regarding my negatives. But without getting into too much detail, I would say he was the comic relief of this season. Whenever you get to Ray Palmer, he actually add some light to it. So I found him to be an interesting character. And then Roy, he is in his arsenal suit and he was really badass. I loved how much Roy has changed since season two because obviously we've been seeing Oliver training, Roy's trying to control his temper, and Roy was kind of like Oliver's little sidekick because he's always by Oliver's side. Well, until Roy had to give up being the arsenal because in the second half of the season, Oliver is a fugitive because thanks to Ra's al Ghul framing Oliver, aka the Arrow, you know, he can't be the Arrow because they're all surrounded by a bunch of these policemen. When Oliver was going to jail, Roy went ahead and revealed to the world that he is the real Arrow. So then that's when Roy goes into prison. He acts like he actually died. He didn't really die, but it made it seem like he died at first when some random prisoner just stabbed him. Because of that, he has to go out, leave Starling City, and start a new life so that the arrow is gone, so that Oliver could be clear of it, and that he's not guilty of anything. So, it's sad to see that Roy does have to go. I don't think he's really going to be coming back as Arsenal anytime soon, because by the season finale, now Thea is going to become Arsenal, but I'm hearing that her name's going to be Speedy, which is really interesting. But yeah, like I said, it is a shame to see Roy go because I really enjoyed Roy in season three. I thought he added a lot. Hopefully, even if Roy is not the regular in season four, hopefully we'll... Let's just say, let's hope we see him again sometime in the future. Because in episode 22, Thea does go visit Roy. And then that's when Roy left Thea. And he gave her the arsenal suit. So now we don't even know where Roy is. I know another thing is that some people didn't really find the flashbacks interesting. Now, at first, I didn't really get invested in the flashbacks when the season starts. But... As the season kept progressing, especially by the second half of season three, I would actually say that's when I found myself more invested in the flashbacks because Oliver is not in the island. Oliver said that he has been stranded on an island for five years, yet in this season, he's been in Hong Kong. So technically, Oliver, you have not been on an island for five years. But I really thought the flashbacks mainly in the second half, I thought were really interesting. You got to see Masio and Tatsu, their son. You saw throughout the flashbacks that Oliver was obviously very close to their son, but unfortunately the son does die because of the virus that's been spreading all over Hong Kong. And regarding Masio and Tatsu, I think it was very cool that they were the reasons that they saved Oliver after the events of the climb. When Masio is the one that found Oliver somewhere in the snowy grounds and then that's when he grabbed Oliver and him and Tatsu they just brought Oliver back to life like 
Frankenstein. I also did really like how Malcolm Merlin had to team up with Oliver and them regarding the whole Ra's al Ghul situation. Despite all the bad things he has done, especially in season one, you can tell that he does care for Thea so much. So I like that he's a bad guy, but with the heart to him. And the way he would help out Diggle, Felicity, and the others when Oliver was up at the League of Assassins, pretending that he's part of Ra's al Ghul, but it turns out that he was all in it for the plan, which I actually expected when he was I saw him. And yes, I did think he looked badass in that black suit. I mean, yeah, he's part of the League of Assassins, but come on, how can you not admire how cool that suit looks? <laughs> and then the final thing that has everyone interested is that Oliver is retired from Arrow, but I mean, I have a good feeling he's gonna be back to being Arrow in season four, so I really did not see the point of him ending it like that. But you know what? He's with Felicity. He's happy. I know some don't really like how this season ended, but personally, I really like that because after all of the crap that Oliver and Felicity, the rest have gone through, I mean, Oliver does deserve happiness. So it is going to be pretty interesting to see where season four will go. Who knows? Maybe Diggle will be in the arrow suit? Maybe? I'm hearing season four could possibly take a lighter tone. Maybe we'll see when that happens. But if that's the case, that'll be cool because we'll get a little more light humor if that's the case for season four. So those are pretty much all I have to say about season three in terms of my positives. There's a lot I liked about season three, but now there are some negatives I did have with the season. Now, this first one is just a nitpick. The rest are gonna be the actual issues I had with the season. But my nitpick was when Oliver kidnaps John Diggle's wife for the League of Assassins because apparently he had to make a sacrifice for the one that he's nearest and dearest closest to so for that for him to become like the next Ra's al Ghul he had to kidnap John Diggle's wife and Oliver says how he's trying to protect him and the others and I guess it kind of made sense but I mean come on Oliver it was pretty messed up for you to kidnap John Diggle's wife just leaving his poor infant baby alone and so now it's just because of that, that now John Diggle, he really is not going to look at Oliver the same way. You got that vibe by the time the season ended. This is just a nitpick though. I thought that was interesting how the episode handled that overall. But, you know, that was just something where I was like, yeah, that just wasn't quite right. Now let's get to my actual issues with the season. Okay, the first problem I had with season three is that most of the stuff is predictable as hell. I mean, there's a few things that were surprising that I didn't see coming, but most of the stuff that happened, like Ra's al Ghul telling Oliver to be the next Ra's al Ghul, yeah, that wasn't shocking at all. Wow, that's like, that was a huge mindfuck, no. I mean, the climb part with the fight and Ra's al Ghul stabbing Oliver, that was quite a surprise. There's a couple more, but the season, I, th I wish it was more unpredictable. I mean, Jane the Virgin. Yes, I watched that show. I love the show. That show had more surprises than Arrow. And it's a great show, but I'm just saying, how is Jean the Virgin more unpredictable in Arrow? In my opinion, at least. I'm just saying. The other thing is that I already addressed it at first regarding the flashbacks. By the second half, I cared for them, but by the first half, the flashbacks were quite interesting but they really weren't interesting enough for me to go okay what's gonna happen next in this episode what's gonna happen next in that episode next problem is that after we're back from our mid-season finale you know in the after events the writing did feel a little bit lost the episodes were still very well done but it felt like once we were back from such a 
huge event like the climb episode 9 it felt like the rioters were all like okay we created something huge we created something so big for the season so now where are we gonna go and they just didn't have the right footing at least for the first few episodes after the mid-season finale from the climb the after events of the climb I thought it was rather underwhelming. I mean, you have Ra's al Ghul stabbing Oliver. And then when you get back to, um, by episode 10, is when you get the start of the next half of the season. You would think Oliver, he's gonna be gone for at least a few episodes. But no, he's actually back to life faster than we expected. It's like by episode 12, he's already back as Arrow. I also thought Detective Lance was really out of character once Laurel told him that Sarah died because the first half of the season, um, they've been hiding from Sarah. And look, it's understandable, okay? You've been hiding something that your own father should know. It's a tragic thing, but your father needs to know. And that's another flaw I did have with the season. It does take Laurel a long, long ass time for her to tell Detective Lance that Sarah died. I believe by episode 12? Episode 12, 13, um, somewhere around there, that's when she finally told Detective Lance that his daughter, Sarah, died. And Detective Lance, regarding him, he was so out of character to Laurel. Like, yes, she had something huge, something you should have known. But the way he was treating his daughter, Laurel, I just thought was so out of character. You never turn your back on your own daughter. You may uh, have anger towards her. You may be frustrated that she do something like this. But don't ever turn your back on her ever because... Your daughter is the one that needs you the most. Of course, I thought he was a little more out of character once he was trying to get Oliver because, you know, he's the fugitive. As WWE fans said in his review, um, Detective Lance was the Tommy Lee Jones of the movie and Oliver Queen was the Harrison Ford of that movie. The character deaths weren't actually deaths. Like... Of course, in episode 19, the episode Broken Arrow, when Roy actually died, two minutes later, he's actually not dead. I mean, really? We actually thought for one second Roy was going to actually die, and nope, he's actually alive. And then by the end of that episode, that is when Thea gets stabbed by Ra's al Ghul. We're all like, oh my gosh, Thea's going to die. They put Thea in the Lazarus pit and boom, she's back to life. It's like the characters that die, they end up just being alive again. I think the only actual character death we got this season was Masio. When Tatsu and Masio had that big fight and Tatsu stabs Masio. I would say that's really the only death. You know, you could say Sarah, but... We all know Legends of Tomorrow is happening. Sarah is technically alive again. Also, another thing about this season is that there's a plot hole involving that if you bring someone back from the dead from the Lazarus Pit, they're going to come back a totally different person. So, of course, once Thea was stabbed by Ra's al Ghul, Oliver and the gang go to the League of Assassins cave dungeon i'm gonna call it the dungeon in all honesty so they go to a lazarus pit they bring thea back to life so when they put her in lazarus pit um at first she lost her memories but then towards the end of the episode when she wakes up the next day she's back to the same old thea I mean, they said she was going to be a different person. I did not see a different person. Thea was still the same character, the same sister that Oliver loved. She's still the same girl that's kicking ass. So, uh, that didn't make sense to me. I just thought there was a plot hole there involving that. Another thing is the Elicity storyline. 
Now, in the season three premiere, they're together. That was one of the things I liked about that shitty season three premiere is that Oliver and Felicity, they're together. But then, you know, after that, the two of them aren't together because the whole Arrow situation is just getting between them and they just have to drag it out. And you have Felicity with Ray Palmer slash the Adam. And of course, they're together. So it's like a whole big love triangle. Yes, the season goes all twilight with it. It's Felicity and Ray Palmer versus Felicity and Oliver Queen and it's just like if Oliver and Felicity are really happy together just have them together and that's cool that they're together by the end of the season but please writers do not do the same thing in season four that you did in season three. We do not need this whole romance storyline to drag out the season because it was honestly to me unnecessary to do that. So hopefully they just stick to the romance plot with Oliver and Felicity together by next season. Another thing, you know, the only reason all of this trouble, all of this Arrow being fugitive thing is happening is because of Ra's al Ghul framing Oliver just because Oliver denied his offer to be the next Ra's al Ghul. But by the end of the season, Malcolm is the next Ra's al Ghul after, you know, Oliver killed him. If Oliver really did not want to be the next Ra's al Ghul, why wasn't Malcolm just the next Ra's al Ghul in the first place? I know some are, are probably going to say, oh, but then we're not going to get the whole storyline with Oliver being also him and all the events happening. It just seemed rather off that Oliver goes through all of that and Malcolm just becomes the next Ra's al Ghul when it could have happened earlier in the season. And the final problem I had with season three, and it's my biggest problem with the season, is actually Felicity. Now, Felicity, she's been known to be this charming and very funny character. She just has a nice, shining personality to her. By the second half of the season, her character completely changes. Where is the funny likable character that we've known and loved for the first two seasons and the first half of season three. Here and there during the second half, yes, you still had your Felicity moments, but there's not enough of them. I was missing the funny Felicity. All she did throughout the second half of the season is whine to Oliver. I mean, that's what all the other characters would do, um, except for really John Diggle. But Felicity, out of all of them, she was whining on Oliver. She was really out of character. It was just so out of place to see a character that was the comedic relief, the one that was the light of Arrow, to just become whiny. Instead of Felicity being the shining light of Arrow, it was Ray Palmer slash the Adam that pretty much replaced Felicity in terms of comedic relief instead. And I hope that we'll get back funny, likable Felicity. Overall, you guys, Arrow Season 3 is a really interesting season. It was really intriguing. I really liked a lot what was happening during the season. It always had my attention. I may not have agreed with some of the things that happened in the season, but no matter what, I was always looking forward to seeing what was going to happen in the next episode by the next episode. It's not as good as Season 1 and Season 2, but for its own right, it was still a very well done season. Yes, there's some problems, but overall, I really thought Arrow Season 3 was just a very intriguing, very interesting storyline that took risks and went in a different direction from the first two seasons, which I truly appreciated. So I'm going to give Arrow Season 3 a 7 out of 10. And you guys, comment down below, let me know, what did you think of Arrow Season 3? How did it compare to Season 1, Season 2? Did you like it better than Season 1, Season 2? Let me know. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!